this video, we're going to take a look at some new features and some enhancements to existing features. The first thing we're going to look at is our place note tool and the ability within text to have favorites. So let's say here we have our curb ramp labeling. So we've got our three and our five number ramps, and we need to add in another one here, which is going to be four. And this is going to be something you're going to do on a regular basis. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our annotate tab. And we're going to select the place note tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and type in curb ramp. And I'm going to put in the pound sign and I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to put the next part, which is C construction detail. Now I plan to be doing this quite a bit. I don't want to have to type that in again and again, and I want to make sure that I'm typing it in exactly the same. So once I've typed it in, I'm going to go ahead and select it here in the text editor window, and then I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to get an option here to save text favorite, and I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now this brings up the favorite icon list here, and you can see it's listed right there, and we'll take a look at manage in a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to get out of this window and I'm going to go back to the place note tool, start from fresh, and I want to place in that note again. I can simply go to my favorites list, select curb ramp, and you'll see it, it'll put it in and then I can just put in the number, makes it easy. All I have to do is one thing and then I can go ahead and put my note in like that. Now if I wanted to manage this, I can go to the favorites list, I can come down to the manage, and this will open the text favorite manager. Now what you see on the left hand side is the active file that I'm in. It's recommended that if you want to have a lot of favorites and available to you in any file that you're in, you should be putting them in a DGN library file, and that's something you can talk to CAD support about. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this here, and you're going to see there's curb ramp, and then you can see there's my favorite. So if I wanted to go ahead and put in, and let's say the curb ramps are always going to be um, above 100, I can go ahead and add in 10, and then I can hit the save icon, and that will update that. And I can add more favorites right here if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now before we leave this dialog, we're done with talking about favorites, but we're going to talk about the place text tool and the text editor. I'm going to go to the place text tool and I'm going to go ahead and extend this dialog a little bit because there's some options here that may not be obvious. If you don't stretch this far enough, you can see some of those icons disappear. And one of the ones that is quite important is the justification because this is no longer on the tool settings window as it was in the prior software. So I'm going to click here and you're going to see I have the option to put in my justification. So if I choose top left, you can see it shows it right there. You also have the option to put in your text height, and mine's seven at the moment. And this is also something that was on the tool settings window, but now that's on the text editor dialog, along with our ability to put the font. And we always had before the option to choose an existing text style if we wanted to. So that's something that's new with the placing text or placing note. It's the same thing. They both give you access to your favorites here. And again, it's highly recommended you put that in a DGN library file that MicroStation is configured to look to. That way they'll always be available to you. Because right now, these are only available while I'm in this file. If I was to leave this file, go to another file, I would not see those favorites available to me there. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And the next tool we're going to be looking at is called Place Table. Now I'm still under the Annotate tab at the top. There's a group called Tables, and there's a tool called Place Table. I'm going to go ahead and select this. On the tool settings window, you're going to see there's three different ways we can place a table. An empty table, from a report, or from Excel, or from a file. We're going to be looking at empty table first. Now there's an option for seed. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Then there's text style. This is where you could choose a text style, and you need to make sure you choose something that is appropriate text height wise. And then we have an option for angle and row count and column count. 
Now, as I drag my cursor into the drawing area, you can see I'm dragging around basically a table. Now, when I place this, I'll do a data, a left click. Now, as I hover over it, you're going to see that it comes up and element information tells me that it is an element type called table. Now, this is a new element type in MicroStation Connect Edition. If you open this file up in MicroStation V8i or an earlier version, you will still see the table, but you will not be able to edit it like we can in MicroStation Connect. To edit the table, I'm going to go ahead and left click on it or select it. And when I do that, you're going to see a tab at the top called Table Tools. This is a contextual tab. It will only appear when we have a table selected. Now on the top left, you can see we have table options. We have table size and rows and columns, merge and cell size, alignment, and then also we have table symbology. Now we can make some minor edits to the table by just selecting a column or a row, and we can hold the left button down. And then when we're done, we left click. We can also change the size, the height of a row, left click, and we're done. Now when we unselect it, it returns back to its regular appearance. Now if I left click again, we do have the option for putting in text into these cells, obviously. And we can do that quickly by double clicking or left click you'll see your text editor appears. And now we can go ahead and type in text. So I'm just gonna type in sample. And to apply it, I'm going to left click, and then you see sample appear. Now I can make adjustments to this up on my alignment. I can say I want that to be centered. So you can see it's centered. We also can do things like we can change the fill type. Now this is not something you would normally do in a contract plan sheet. But if I wanted to, for example, make these header across the top, this row, I could select the first one, see it changes to a highlight color, then hold the shift key down, select the last one. Now I can come up and I can change the fill. Again, we wouldn't do this in a contract plan sheet. This could be something that would be like an exhibit or something like that. And then we can come in and we can apply a color to it. And you can see now it has a color. And if I unselect it, this is what you would see. So that's placing an empty table and you can then make minor edits to it. Now there is an option to choose from pre-created tables and I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna delete this by selecting it and then on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit the delete key and that deletes it just like any other element. I'm gonna go back to place table. On the tool settings window, there was an option here for seed. Now headquarters has taken the liberty of pre-creating some of these tables for you. So if I select them, you can see I have rock blanket, temp fence, rumble strip. I'm gonna select temp fence. And when I do that, you can see there's a table that already has some columns and rows predetermined. So if I place this and then I select it, I can now add rows, I can add columns, I can change the font, I can change the text, things like that. But these are considered standards, but it does give you the ability to go about making changes to it if you wanted to. It's just a starting point, if you will. So that's placing a table as either empty, where you determine the number of rows and columns, and then also placing it from a seed. So there are, again, a number of seeds that you can choose.